All right. So we're going to start on uh, error and under uncertainty uh, with this lecture, which is actually something that will run through uh, much of the course. That's an important part of uh, experimental work. So measurement, as we saw last time, is assignment of a specific value to a physical variable. Um, when we do that, when we transform a physical quality into a number, we necessarily are going to have some error in that output. Uh, why? Why is that necessary? Well, one, the quantity itself might be variable, right? If we're measuring the uh, velocity of a uh, river flow uh, from second to second, that actual measurement might be different. Uh, we're going to have limitations in our instrument, right? Either um, maybe our calibration and our, our transduction uh, might be off, right? Our calibration might be off. Our, we might have a resolution problem, right? There's, you know, I can measure, you know, a 16th of an inch, but I can't measure a 64th or a 128th of an inch. Um, we're going to have variability in the measuring process or in the conditions of our measurement. In other words, our lab conditions might change, right? Our, uh, our instrument might, you know, expand because it's warmer than it was the day before, uh, or the air pressure is different. Uh, and then the effects of the measurement process itself are impossible to avoid. When I insert um, uh, an anemometer into, uh, that is a airspeed measurement device into a duct, I'm actually changing the flow in that duct. It becomes a different thing. Uh, and so measuring necessarily affects uh, the thing that's being measured. So all of these mean that I'm going to have some error. Um, in addition, finally, one more, a failure to account for an extraneous variable. I'm not taking something into account, like maybe there's friction here, uh, and I'm ignoring that friction, and so we might end up with uh, some error in our measurement. So what we want to do is start naming these things. Uh, this is a source of error, rather than just saying human error, which is, I think, a tendency of beginning uh, scientific folks, is just to say, oh, we just messed up somewhere. No, you have to be more uh, specific about what is messed up, where those sources of error happen, um, uh, and describe that in your results so people know exactly what was happening uh, as you measure. Uh, and so, yes, here we have uh, the, the many ways <laughs> you can mess up in your lab. But I hope you can see that some of these ways are not you messing up. Error is not about mistakes, always. Uh, error is about the nature of scientific work. Uh, we're always going to have some error and uncertainty. So we have different ways of describing error. One is called absolute error, um, and that is the difference between whatever the true value of something is uh, and my reported value. Um, and we define that by subtracting the two of them. Uh, but you can see a problem here, right? We don't know what the true value is, uh, so we don't really know what our error is. If we did that, uh, we would know uh, better what, how to fix it, right? We'd get rid of that error. Um, but since we don't, uh, those error uh, evaluations are always going to be estimates. We're always kind of uh, guessing to a certain extent about what, uh, what our error is. So um, another way to report error uh, is uh, percentage error, right, uh, or relative error. Uh, absolute error has the problem of not, you don't know what that means unless you know the context of the measurement. Uh, relative error turns uh, a absolute error, that uh, E right here is our absolute error. Our reference value here is, in this case, if we're measuring the uh, weight of a hippo, would be the actual uh, ex uh, value of the weight of the hippo. Uh, and so we have a percent, you know two kilograms over 2,000 kilograms, uh, and we have a 0.1% error, right? I know just without without even knowing what I'm measuring, if you say I have a 1% error, I have a good sense of how big that error is. If you say I have a 20% error, I know how big that error is. But if you say I have a two kilo kilogram error, I don't really know uh, exactly what that means. So that's why relative error can be uh, a better way of talking about error. All right. 
So, air is the difference between the true value and our measured value. Uh, but like I said, we don't really know what that air is. And so our estimate of that air, our quantification of that, is called uncertainty. Um, and we want to turn that into an actual value so that we can say, how sure are we about what our data is? Um, right? So we can tell other scientists, um, I think the value is 10 kilograms, but it could be 9.9 .9 or it could be 10.1. Um, that's a way of a kind of way of being honest about our data. And that's what an uncertainty calculation is for. Now, what's the difference between error and uncertainty? They're uh, oftentimes used interchangeably. And really, in this class, we'll use them interchangeably a lot. But there, there is a, a difference, right? Error is a product of the measurement process. It's there. It's, it's the difference between what our value and what that value actually uh, is. Uncertainty is a number. Right. That's the thing that we've defined. That's our estimate of uh, what that error is. Um, so we can use both of those and um, oftentimes we'll use them interchangeably, but just recognize that uncertainty is a number that we come up with to describe error, which we don't really know what it is, but we know it's there. So the quantification of the estimated balance of possible error. That's like using some fancy language to tell us uh, what uncertainty is. All right, so in order we, to do that, we need to know how to do this quantification process. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk a lot about that over the next uh, couple of months, but um, about how to come up with that number. But first we're gonna talk about how to report that number uh, so that we can say uh, when we give a result, we can say, this is how confident I am in my measurement. And to do that, we use a couple of tools. One is bounds, which you see as a plus minus, and a level of confidence. In other words, how confident am I that it's inside these bounds? So this is standard uh, reporting form here, where we say uh, our true value is equal to some number plus or minus some other number and that I think that, that I know that with a certain level of confidence. Um, that level of confidence is a percentage. So let's say I've got my hippo here. I might say uh, the true value of the mass of this hippo is 2,000 kilograms plus or minus 2 kilograms and I'm 95% sure that the true mass is between 1,998 and 2,002, okay? So this suggests bounds on either side of some estimated value. This tells us how confident I am that it's the actual true value is within those bounds. One of the other ways that we report uncertainty is by using significant figures. And I know you've run into significant figures, um, and oftentimes I don't think it's quite clear what the purpose of those is to beginning uh, engineers and scientists, but they're really about uncertainty. They're telling people, how sure are you of a certain value? So when I write 12.7 kilograms, uh, it's really the same as writing this uh, in bounded form, right? Because if it was above 12.75, I would have written 12.8 kilograms, okay? And if I was sure that it was 12.76, I would have written 12.76, okay? So significant figures tell us, uh, in essence, how sure we are of a number. Now, um, when we report uncertainty, Remember, it's an estimate, so we're not going to report that with a lot of significant figures because we don't know it very well. We're estimating it. And so we always report our uncertainty uh, with two significant digits. Okay, so here, this might be the result of our calculations, right? And we want to keep those, all those digits while we do our intermediate calculations. But when we get our result, 
this is when we turn our result into this. And notice this has two significant digits. This has the same decimal, final decimal column as this one. Okay, so you decide your significant digits for the known value by using two digits for your uncertainty. And just a couple of more examples here uh, of ways that we can uh, use sig uh, uncertainty to define our sig figs. So we always want to, why, why do we always want to have the same decimal column here and here? Because if I knew this, right, if my uncertainty, you know, was say 1.7, um, then I would be more certain about this over here, right? And I'd have to include a second column here. Um, and so uh, the uncertainty and sig figs are tied very tightly together, right? The, the level of my uncertainty tells me how many sig figs I want to use. Some basic rules for this, and this I hope is review, but I know from experience that it's not necessarily a review for folks. So I just wanted to give you some basic rules for addition and subtraction. Uh, we don't want to include any value, uh, any decimal column that is not in all of the numbers. Um, so examples are always best for this, <laughs> trying to explain this. So if I add 2 to 0.143, um, my answer is not going to be any more accurate than 2.1, okay? Because this suggests an uncertainty ranging from, you know, 1.95 to 2.05. So these numbers over here are becoming uh, becoming. Uh, less meaningful. And this example uh, of the T-Rex is a great sort of illustration of that, right? When I add 6 to 70 million, I don't get 70 million and 6. Uh, I get 70 million, right? Because that, that 70 million was uh, only presumably a couple of significant digits. Um, and so adding that 6 doesn't really change that because this, if I wrote, if let's say this 70 million has two significant digits, um, it's kind of hard to tell when you have a bunch of zeros, um, which is one of the reasons scientists use uh, exponential values uh, times 10 to the, this would be 70 times 10 to the 6, right? Um, when this 70 times 10 to the 6 suggests it might be 65 million, it might be, you know, um, 75 million. Uh, and so when we add six, it doesn't really change that number at all, which is why this is a funny, funny joke. <laughs> funny, funny, funny joke, right? Uh, funny in the science, science world. All right. When we're multiplying, uh, we don't want to use decimal columns because that doesn't make sense. So we want to use significant figures. Uh, and again, we take the least accurate input value uh, and use the values there. But this time we're counting sig figs. So this has two significant figures. So my answer is not going to have more than two significant figures. Uh, and so when I multiply that, I uh, change my answer to adjust for that. Now this, I know sig figs to a lot of students are kind of boring and they don't really understand why it matters. Uh, but I, I really want to stress, and I'll do this if you, if you use eight sig figs in a report, um, it looks terrible. Like professional scientists and engineers don't make this mistake because it looks weird, just like this the the joke about the T Rex here. Um, it's part of paying attention to what your numbers mean, um, and if you don't use uh, change your numbers to a reasonable number, like following the rules exactly isn't super crucial, um, but you have to have a general idea of. How certain am I of the values um, that I'm using? Don't look silly. <laughs> it's the short message. All right. So there's a, there's a sweet absurdify, absurdity to quantifying something that we don't uh, actually know. And so uncertainty is a um, process of estimation. Uh, but it's also because of that, we want to follow a conventional process. 
uh, we want to make sure that everybody's doing the same way, so those numbers actually mean something, uh, even if they are always going to be estimates. Um, so if our numbers are off, uh, they'll be off uh, for uh, in a recognizable way. All right, so that's our introduction to uh, the ideas of error and uncertainty, and we'll dig into how to calculate those values uh, in future lectures.